All right, man. Well, I did this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I got probably 30 or 40 emails and uh, hit up on Twitter to do it again. And I want to just start today by saying, you know, like Coach said, man, X's and O's and X's and O's. And at, at some point, uh, we're not going to out-guru anybody. And to me, man, this is my baby, mental toughness and build mental toughness. And some guys, some guys in this business – I uh, think they're getting their kids tough and then they'll run them and they'll see their kids gas and, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll take them through a process and they'll get them in shape. But man, I, I was a, a fortunate enough to, you know, serve in the United States Marine Corps. So to me, uh, mental tough, mentally tough was a whole different ball game. And I really wanted to know that these kids, uh, they, I wanted to know that they weren't going to fold it up on me. I wanted to know exactly who they were. And, and the one thing that I didn't do the last time we did this, because I only had about 35 or 40 minutes, I'm going to do the whole thing today. The, the one thing that I didn't talk about last time, I'm going to start with today, because I think it's the most important thing that, that we did, you know, the years that, that we were really successful and had good boot camps. And I can tell you this, when we started this boot camp, it, 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 from right off the bat, we had success. I think we went four rounds that year and really had a chance to be state champion. And then I took a job out west, took a team that was two and forty-eight, and then we had winning seasons. And then I and unfortunately I had to leave there. Uh, you know, my wife relocated with her job, and then I went to a school that was three and thir- three and sixty-seven, and then we we were seven and four, and then we're in the playoffs the next year. So I seen the results of it in the beginning when I first started this, and I can tell you right now, being a former Marine, there's there's no other there's no other way to do it than the way that we do it in my mind. And I know everybody has their ways, but for for me, it was more of a measure of listen, let's let's take these kids and and see how tough we can make them. Because I was a Marine, and I knew right off the bat uh, that you could take a person with an average mentality and build an unbelievable mentality if you just went through the process. But so you see, the problem is, and you know it and I know, we live in a soft world today, man. And we have some great parents, and then we have some parents out there that really don't want uh, Johnny push that hard, really don't want him going through that kind of a process. And then we have some people that want us to push their kids as hard as we can push them. But the, you know, the, the thing that we do in this business is we're in this together. We got to push everyone the same. So here, here, here was the purpose of the boot camp when we started. I wanted to separate the committed from the uncommitted. Man, we were tired of dragging dead weight around, man. We were tired of having kids in the program that didn't pay the price, didn't do the right things. And we, you know, I really believe this in my heart, and I'll take it to my grave. You can't manage what you don't measure. And if, if you're not holding them accountable in the classroom and, and on the field and more than anything in their effort, in their effort in everything they do, then, then we're going backwards. So when we built this, we just wanted to separate them, man. I want to know. I don't want to guess where you're at. I want to know where you're at. So we wanted to build mental toughness, and everybody talks about it. It's just like defense. Everybody says, we play fast, and the outside linebacker has 15 reads before he can go to the ball. I'm talking about really playing fast. I'm talking about real mental toughness, not some show mental toughness that we do this, this, this. This process that I put together, you'll know. From Google Chrome. You'll know. Tag You'll know, you'll know if they're ready. You, you, there'll be no question. And as we get through this, you'll understand why. And uh, the, the, the thing that really I wanted to do the most was build men of high character. I wanted to know when they left. I wanted to know when they left the program that, that they were good men, that, that they could handle tough things in life, that no matter what happened, nothing could get them down. And that's the, that's the grand prize, and that's really the reason we went to the boot camp. Do we want to win football games? Do we want to get to the next level? Absolutely. But, man, I wanted to make sure when that kid started college, he finished. I wanted to make sure when he started marriage, he finished. I wanted to make sure that he could reach his full potential and live the mo life, maxing out his life. And, 
And if he was going to learn to max out his life, he had to learn to max out his physical and mental toughness. And that's all we did. We found a way to break them so they won't break. In the beginning, I was, I was in my first, my fourth year of a program, and we were, we were one and done in the, in the playoffs four years in a row. And I won't get too much in this beginning because uh, this is a long enough deal, but it's a good one. Uh, but I was in my fourth year. We were fast enough, disciplined enough, tough enough, but there was just something missing. I couldn't put my finger on it. And we got into a ball game with the wing T team one night in the first round. We should have beat them. Really, really well-coached team, good team, but we were better. We had better kids. And we somehow ended up losing that game. And over Christmas break, the first three or four days, man, I just sat there and stewed and stewed. And I said, I got to find a way. Our kids care enough to work hard. Our kids do exactly what we ask them to. They care about this town. They care about this school. They care about this program. They deserve, they deserve to get to the next level. But I can't get them over the mental hump. I can't get them past. I can't get them past their conditioning that they're, they're, you know, they're a one-and-done team. They, they, they've never won a state championship. They've never, 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 never. I want to get them past that. So the thinking was not what we haven't done. It's what we're going to do, and you're not going to stop us. When, when we can develop that kind of mental toughness, this is what we're setting out to do. Here's what it is. Here's the goal. Now nothing is going to stop us. That's what my, the main objective was that Christmas. And, I, I, you know, I wanted to edge. I wanted to know when our kids went onto the field that, barring mistakes, you weren't going to beat us physically or mentally. And like I said, a lot of guys say it, but it's just blah, blah, blah. I wanted to know it. I wanted to be able to look my kids in the eyes and know it. And, and, and you know, the, being this hardcore is not for everybody. I like physicality. I like running the ball. I like playing great defense. I don't know what everybody else is up to out there. There's a lot of finesse in this game today, but it's still football. At some point, you better be tough. At some point, you better be prepared. At some point, they're going to test you. And when you get tested, you're, it's black and white. You fail or you pass. So I just kind of went through my little spill there up on the PowerPoint that, uh, you know, that's not with Marine Corps. A troubled kid, man, football saved my life to even get to that point. But very troubled, not mentally tough, not mentally tough. Physically tough, but not mentally tough. And this, this, I'm not saying this is to, to, uh, to say anything about me. I'm talking about my frame of reference. How did the Marine Corps take a guy that could barely get through school, no discipline, grew up without a father, grew up, grew up rough, grew all these things, and in and, and 16 weeks turn this dude into a mental, a mental giant. Not, a, not mentally tough but a mental giant, like no, nothing, no thing could stop me at 18 years old. I knew how, I knew how it was done. I went through the process. Why couldn't I teach these kids the same thing they taught me? I didn't have them 24-7, 365, but I had them long enough. I had them long enough. If I could be efficient, I'll turn these little jokers into some bad motor scooters. I'll turn them into Marines, and they won't even know it. So that's where it all began. And the Marine Corps system, I'm going to just disclose this. When you do a boot camp, and what I think is the perfect time in America to do a boot camp, when you do a boot camp, okay, especially now because we could get our kids back with five weeks or three weeks or six weeks or eight weeks. Nobody knows right now. But when you do a boot camp, it's so physically demanding. Now, forget the mental part because they'll get used to the mental. They'll develop a mental toughness. But it's so demanding that, that you can't go more than six weeks. When you do this, when you start this process, you don't go more than six weeks. You can't beat the body down that much. But make no bones about it. I don't know how guys do things. And I'm sure that they're, you know, there's a lot of dudes out there that will sit back and say, well, I do this and that and I get this result and that. And, you know, most of the time it's because they got athletes. I want to take a kid because we don't get a recruitment. Well, that's a lie. We do get a recruitment in high school football. Another subject. 
some get to recruit better ones than others. Private schools in Oklahoma being one of them. But I want to take pretty average dudes because year to year we don't know what we got. And I want to take a dude and max him out, okay? Because that's my deal. Live the mo life. Are you maxing out your life? If God made you an eight, be an eight. How dare you walk around and serve a, a four and a half if you have eight ability. So you can't do this more than four to six weeks. Anything longer than six weeks is too much. Most people, most people can't, <clears throat> cannot do it because it's demanding on the coaches and the players as well. Because you, you'll find out when you start this, it's demanding on the coaches. You can't have these coaches that are, are, are two seconds late, two minutes late. You no, know, everybody has to be on point and on time. You're trying to re, especially like right now, think about it. If we came back, you know, in, in a month, you got to reestablish your culture right now. I don't care how many Zoom meetings you've been on. You better reestablish the culture right now. And culture simply shared attitudes and beliefs, values and goals that characterize an organization. You need to change the attitudes and the values right now and the goals because the goals are going to change with the time frame you have to get these kids ready. So I'm going to start off by, by talking about one thing that we didn't talk about the last time we did this. We didn't talk about testing. If I wanted to know right now how mentally tough you are, I would put you through a, a rubric of some tests, some physical tests, and they would be so demanding that I could rate you from one, two, three. And one would be, if I want to measure your mental toughness, I'm going to go one, two, three. First, a, a, one, a one's going to be ESPN. I got to shut this thing off. A one's going to be, when does he quit? Mental toughness. When does he quit? When will he give it up? When will he check it in? That's what we're trying to build. If I give you a one, that means that those kids at the first sign of the first sign of, of adversity, we've all had them, we all know them. And they can do some real good things in games, even big games if you spot play them. But if they got to be the man in a dog fight, if they got to be the man in, in a nut cutting, you don't want that kid on the field. Well, that kid's a good player. All we have to do is fix his mental toughness. And he, he goes from a player that we can spot playing a big game to a player that's a big, a big time in a big game. So if I want to measure his mental toughness, a number, I'm going to give him a one, two, or three. One being that he quits. He goes into uh, fight or flight mode, the first sign of adversity. A number two, if I want to measure his mental toughness, because when we get these kids, we're going to test them. And I'll talk about the physical test in a minute. But the mental test is this. When you make your first sheet on these kids, they, you put a mental toughness up there. They get a one, two, or three. The first day we get them, we're going to find out if he's a one, two, or a three. And you better not have a three in your program. A one is a kid that gives up the first sign of adversity. A two? A two, that kid, that kid will give up when he when when things get hard. He'll be there in the beginning of the uh, of the tough times, and he'll get you through the little adversities. But I mean, when it's when it's a, a a no hope situation, that kid's checked out. He's a two. He's he's not gonna give up the first sign of adversity. But I don't know if, if you know if he's gonna be there in the end. He might be. I don't know. But you know, fifty percent of the time, he's not. And the three is the kid that you know if he don't get it done, he physically gave you everything he had with his heart and his soul. That's all he could do. We want a bunch of threes. And at the end of this, you're going to have 90% of your threes. I'll guarantee it. So I want to say before you start this boot camp, if you go ahead and get – get going with your boot camp when you first do this you got to set your weight room up and and all the places you're going to do your auxiliary and and you're going to do your agility set it set it up to be user friendly man you're going to have to move the mass because when you do a boot camp you do everything together i always say this and i'll, I'll go over it today in our mantra how do you win together it's hard to beat a team and these kids are going to hear those things every day because part of part of being 
part of becoming a Marine, part of becoming a mentally tough man is having a core value system, things that you believe in. How do you win together? I need my buddies. It's hard to beat a team. It takes all of us. You see, those things are important. And once you start putting them in those guy in your player's head through this boot camp system, they'll take them to their grave, man. You give them, you give them hope, you give them power, you give them initiative, you give them, you give them want to for life, not just for the games, not just for high school. You teach them life, man. These kids learn some values. So define your space. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so freaking fired up, man. I love this stuff. Man, uh, and now we were talking about this last night. Let me just break break the, the deal here for a minute. We were talking about this last night, me and a good friend out in Western Oklahoma. And, and I said, you know, Mike, the, the, the two things I love about this game the most is watching kids grow, like the light go off, like them become the best they can be, them start reaching their full potential. That's, that's, the, that's the most amazing thing about the game of football and the game of all athletics, man, watching them, watching them start maxing out their life, watching them start reaching their full potential, man. That's the greatest thing we do in this business. And that's why I love the boot camp. We, we, we give them the opportunity, man, by teaching them things. You know, half of the kids we have are more. They don't get it at home. If we don't teach them who is, I think every kid should go through some kind of military deal right out of high school to gain that discipline fast. I like football's one of the only games that you can truly, truly give it to them mentally and physical, physically give them mental toughness. So I want you guys to know when you start your boot camp, your relationship has to change with the kids for a period of time. You can't be their buddy. The first year I did this, I turned a whole 40 by 40 room with wrestle mats and I didn't talk to them. I, I we went out there and the coaches went through the deal and, and, and we, we made eye contact, and it was hard. And, and if we, when we demanded something, we demanded it. We didn't, we didn't smoke and joke with them. We didn't, we didn't shoot the bull with them. We didn't hang out with them. We, we, we went through this process, I'm going to teach you, and we shut the door and let them figure it out together. Let them bitch about it together. Let them hang out together. They don't need us in there. You know, we, we monitor them. We're not going to let them, you know, do, you know, just be in there alone. But we just changed our relationship, man. We're not here to be your buddy. You're going to get through this four or six weeks or three or whatever it is, and you're going to be a changed man for life. I ain't, I don't, you don't need my friendship and I don't need yours. There's a, there's a coach player relationship here that's established during this boot camp. And you know, you, you got to get looser with these kids today if you're going to hang with them. And I understand that. But in the beginning, no, absolutely not. They knock on the door and they ask permission to speak. They ask permission to do everything. Uh, and I'll go over that in a minute. No phony chatter, just things that you guys demand out of your programs anyway. I don't want anybody in there. No, absolutely not. We don't do that. No phony chatter. You have to change the relationship with your kids when you put them through this. You don't met, you don't, it's, if it ain't business, don't talk about it. Don't text it. Don't social it. It's, we are going through this period to become tougher men, to become better men, to become mental giants. Not a guy that can get through a football game, a guy that can get through anything in life. We're not here to become halfway. I don't want a halfway car. I don't want a halfway house. I don't want a halfway girlfriend. I don't want to play on a halfway football team. This deal is real. And when you start it, you have to be tough. Tough on them kids. Even the coach that it jokes around or wrestles around all the time and every program's got one. No phony chatter, man. It's got to be 100%. 100%. Coaches rules. Everything has to be planned and consistent every day. And I'm going to give you every tool you need. But everything has to be planned and consistent every day. You can't have any ill organization. You cannot. Not when you're doing this. You have to be on point. Everything's by the numbers, and I'll teach you that. Stand your ground. Zero player, and I'll say it again, zero player coaches relationships during this deal. You do not do it. You do not establish a culture by having loose player coaches relationships. So when you do this boot camp, you cannot do that. It's, it's, not even a, it's not even a question. 
So let me see if I can get on the right deal here. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to start this off. Here's some control words. You guys take notes on this if you, if you want. If not, I'll send you this. When you walk into the room, zero is your control word. When you say zero, they stop whatever they're doing. They do not move. They do not move their hands. They stay in the position they're in. When you say ready, ready, now you guys may have your breakdowns. That's fine. Use what you, use what you already have in place for your controls on your kids. I'm just giving you something if you don't have them. When I walk into a room, if I say zero, boom. And I mean zero. I mean absolute discipline, absolute obedience, absolutely no more talking, no more horseplay, no more movement. Stop what you're doing because you heard the control word in its business. It teaches your kids to get focused. You see, we do a lot of things in this business that we ought to be smarter than, than, than we are sometimes. Hey, how many of you guys in this business, I'm guilty, guys. I, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm guilty. I'm more guilty than any of you probably. Hey, get focused, pay attention. Get focused, pay attention. Get focused, pay attention. You tell kids that every day, all day. This system, this process will teach will teach your kids how to focus. Zero. Boom. No more movement. I know I'm locked in right now. Whatever that man says is the gospel, and I got to do it. Nothing going on in my world matters. It's time to train. So that's a great control word. I say ready, ready. My guys break it down into football position. I say one, two, three. They say pride. I say ready, ready. They say attack. I say one, two, three. They say pride. I just want to move them like that. I want them to get in a football position every time they move. So I'm ready, ready, boom, attack. One, two, three, pride. Everybody claps and they run to where they're going. So if they're, if they're about to begin an exercise, the coach will always say ready. For example, jumping jacks, jumping jacks, ready. What does ready teach them? Ready teaches them, hey, there's a command coming. Pay attention. He's about to tell me something. Pay attention. Heck, I'll, sometimes I know we're, we're in a big game and the kids will be, you know, buzzing here, buzzing here on the sideline. I'll say, hey, ready, 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 ready. And they'll just boom. They'll lock it up. They know, hey, I'm about to tell them something. And that comes from the boot camp. That comes from your control words. Great programs have control words. Online, <clears throat> how we start the day off, and this is how you're going to start your boot camp, wherever, you're gonna, wherever you get your kids dressed. And I'll tell you what we did, what we did and we will do every time – we get the chance, you know, depends on, you know, hopefully I'm at a place, you know, the next, you know, 20 years, it's the same place. I'm tired of moving around jobs, but uh, getting a place where you can put lines on the floor, just to paint a line in front of their lockers, like they're going to stand on line in the position of attention. When you start your boot camp and you say, boom, we start at 220 every day at 220. When you come in there, they ought to be malingering around. They ought to be close to the line and you come in the room, they get to the line. And now, zero, ready, ready, attack, one, two, three, pride. You tell them where they're going and they get there. Or, like I said, here, how we do it, we put them online and we use, and, and I'll go through it in a minute, is we'll, we'll, we'll use a mantra. And I'll, tell, I'll show you what a mantra does for you. So we, we put them online every day, position of attention, roll call. We start them. And uh, we get them going. And... The one thing that we do that I love is, is our mantra, and I'll go over that in a minute. We put these guys online, and uh, we'll go through a mantra, but that's more on down the line. So the fiscal standards. We had a lot of kids in our program when we started this, and we really got in the weight room, just like everybody gets in the weight room. We had a lot of kids in our program that were really strong like could squat 500, squat 400, whatever it was, bench 315, but whatever it was, you know, really strong high school kids. And uh, a lot of them couldn't make plays, but they were obsessed with the weight room. And I thought, man, I'm killing these kids by, by letting them, you know, we ran them. Don't get me wrong. We ran them. We ran them. We did everything you were supposed to do, but we just didn't, man, we just had a different set of standards. And, you know, when we went to these, uh, you know, this boot camp, we changed a lot of our standards because 
You know, I got tired of broad jump and vertical jump and, and what OU wanted, what Texas wanted, what the colleges wanted on these kids. Man, they ain't helping me win. I need to do – I need to have standards for my kids, for high school kids to win high school football games. And I wasn't going to waste my time broad jumping, vertical jumping. Is a 40 important? Absolutely. Shuttle run? Absolutely. I get something out of it too. I do. We get, we get fast twitch, we get stronger, we get faster. We had kids that were strong, fast, couldn't make plays. Couldn't make plays. You know, the old the kid that'll get you fired that looks like Tar Tarzan, plays like Jane, not that kid. We were tired of all these tests. Man, like I said, we wanted, I wanted to know, <coughs> I want to know your heart. Hey, Sam Firth, he's on here watching. I got a couple guys tuning in. Rick Aguilar, Sam Firth went through it. I want to know their heart. I want to know how tough you are. I don't care how much. You know what? Yes, is a bench press important in all the strength in a body? Absolutely. What's really important, though, would you take a kid with more heart, with more guts, more mental toughness, or do you want the strong kid, the good-looking kid, or the mentally tough kid? Man, I want the mentally tough kid. You know, we've all had that kid. I had to, I've had a couple of them that weren't strong at all, were tough can make plays, can make blocks, can win your football games. Didn't look the best, but they were mentally tough. I'll take that kid every time, and you would too. We decided we needed to make a system that everyone had the same advantages. So we, we tested linemen and skill. And like I said, when we started this, we're going to test your mental toughness. Do you quit the first side of adversity? Will you hang in there a little longer, or will you never quit? Are you one, are you two, or are you three? Because – we test every two weeks in this, and you got to just do it however you do it, however long you make it. Alert from Google but We test every two weeks. So, in two weeks, can I get that kid's number from a one, a kid that'll quit at the first sign of adversity, to a two? He'll hang in there a little longer. And by the end of the boot camp, can I get him to a three? So, when you put your kids' names down there and you put their mental toughness number, as we go along and we test every two weeks or week, whatever you guys do, Okay, his push-ups, pull-ups, all this stuff's getting better. Is his mental toughness getting better? Because you can measure that. You can measure when he does push-ups. You can measure when he does a, a 300 shuttle. You can measure mental toughness. You know what he's capable of. You know when he ducks his head and his, his eyeballs start looking at the ground. And he starts looking around to make sure, starts moaning to, to so coaches can hear him suffering because he's looking for an excuse to get out give up, give a little less effort than he can. You guys all know these kids. You can measure mental toughness. You can do it. So we want to set a standard that we can measure their heart. Man, I want to know who you are. You know, your 40 time don't tell me who you are. I've had kids that could run 44, a 4-4, four, four, look at you, cut a backflip at the other end of the track, couldn't play dead in the John Wayne Western. Didn't have any mental toughness. You'll take mental toughness every day. This – the testing system we came up with is a Marine Corps based. Okay, I wanted to see, I wanted to see athletic looking dudes. You know, you know how can you tell a good football player when he's walking away? His glued hands, his calves, his his, uh, his triceps. I wanted dudes that looked the part. They weren't too big. They weren't too small. I was. I'm ready to play with all linebackers in high school football. You know, if we, if we if we had to, you know, 215 pound, you know, down guys. So we implemented a, a mix between the Army and the Marine Corps standards. I wanted to test their push-ups. Can you handle your body? Because I'll take push-ups over bench in high school football a lot of times, you know, in a lot of positions, so receivers, uh, running backs, uh, you know, and I know we got to be strong. I'm not saying to th discard everything, but I'm saying how many push-ups can this guy do? How, what can he do with his own body weight? How long can he? How long can he go? You know how how hard can he go that long? So we wanted to test them. How do you handle your own body? So when we start a boot camp, it was five tests: push-ups, pull-ups, three hundred shuttle. I want to test their heart. That's how you can tell their heart, fellas. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just passing on stuff that I've learned from other guys. If you want to test their heart, run them in a three hundred shuttle. Test them. 
Okay, set standards because you're going to see in a second these standards mean something. They mean something. These tests mean something. So we did a mile run. Will you run a mile in football? Hell no, you won't run a mile. But when that kid has to test for that mile that day, watch his body language even when he walks out there. Watch his, watch his body language when he takes off on a run. Watch him finish it. That's where you can tell who this kid is. You want to know who is on your football team? Test them in a 300 shuttle a mile every two weeks and run them in that during this progression enough to get them better at it. You find your complainers. And then about three or four weeks into this, when it's cake, when it's easy, when it's fresh bread, when, when it's, it's nothing to them, you'll see the man that they can become when they stop griping and complaining and worrying about how bad it's going to hurt instead of worrying about the job that they got to do. That's why we test them in the mile. I wanted to see your endurance, but I wanted to see who the hell you were. And I need to change that. Endurance and character should be on that PowerPoint because you need to know who the hell is on your football team. And I'll tell you what, you, we've lost character in this, in this game to touchdowns, especially in the college game. NFL is the NFL. But, you know, when, when touchdowns become more important than character, that's the problem in this game because that's not what this game's about. Test their endurance and their character by running them in the mile. If they gripe and complain, bitch and fuss, instead of focusing on getting better, you know who you got. You know what you're up against. The first time he's not coachable, hell, you, you went through the boot camp with him. You seen what he was. If it didn't change in six weeks and you still got him, that's your issue, not his. You knew what he was. The bench press. We didn't want to give them a bench press that overwhelmed them. So we had some strong kids at the time, too. Like I said, it wasn't a strong issue. It wasn't an a athletic issue. It was a, it was a fire issue, man. Like, I'm going to set myself on fire, and I'm going to know. Not only did I know, they knew. When we're done with them in this, they know. Yeah, I, don't, I know, but they know. That's what's important. The players know. They've changed. How could they have went through this and not changed? So their bench press was 1.1 of their body weight. That means if I weighed 200, I, could, I had to bench 210. So we made it doable. And every kid could achieve it. So here we go. This was, this was when these kids come in there, they're going to start at the lowest level. And I stole this off gang, gangland on, on the History Channel. When they come in there, they're on a white shirt. And a white shirt means it, it has a prospect. You're prospecting for the football team. You're not on the football team. And if you can, with your facility, kick all your varsity kids out and put them in your junior high locker room. Make them graduate back to that varsity locker room at the end of the camp. But we put this white shirt. So you can imagine – you know, 70 kids in there with white shirts on to say prospect. When we test, in, when we test, we don't give them their shirt the first the beginning of it. We give them their, their shirt in two weeks. So I'm standing there in a white shirt that says prospect, okay? We've tested you. If a kid can't run a mile in under 10 minutes, he will never graduate from that white shirt. He will never move on. Every human being alive can run a mile in under 10 minutes if they will commit to it. Let me say that again. Every human alive can run a mile in under 10 minutes if he or she will commit to it. We can almost walk it. All we're trying to do is make this kid the best he can be, reach potential, low life. God made you eight, be an eight. How dare you walk around a four and a half? So if you can't run a mile or do one pull-up, you will never get out of a white shirt. You will always be a prospect for this football team. Because in my mind, and if you're hard mentally, that kid on a good football team is a liability. He don't belong on that football team. And if a coach would let him be on that football team and not make him any tougher than that, not get him in any better shape than that, he ain't coaching the game of football I know. 
not no, not no, not no. No, 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 no. You can't run a mile in under 10 minutes and you're playing the most physical game on the earth down after down after down. And, and I say the most physical game on earth because the UFC and bull riding is pretty physical. But they don't smash their face into another man's face for three and a half hours. They do it for 30 minutes and seconds. So if, if, if a kid can't run under a 10-minute mile, he ain't playing. He ain't, he ain't getting out of that white shirt. And if he don't get out of that white shirt, he's a liability and he ain't dressing until he does. And I promise you, that's a great motivator. I had a kid lose 250 pounds one time, an obese kid. And now he's a fitness instructor because of this boot camp. It can be done if you'll do it. He graduates out of that white shirt. He gets a prospect shirt. See, we were the miners at the time. And, and the third shirt is the miner. So he gets out of the, the white shirt. He's a prospect. This is a, 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 a slide from Elk City, Oklahoma. The, the, the white shirt was the bottom. The tan, that means this kid ran his, his mile in under 10 minutes. He could do a pull-up, okay? So the standards to be a, a, a big elk to get that brown shirt was you had to bench your body weight ratio. You had to get, really it says two or three, it's three of the four. Our O-line, our highest standards, our O-lineman had to run to get a perfect, to get to be an elk, to be a minor, to be a wolverine, all the places that I've implemented this. Our kids, our linemen had to run under eight minutes. And I'm going to tell you, 100%, my friends, every one of them did it. Every school, every one of them, because it meant that much to me. They either decided football wasn't for them or they ran an eight-minute mile. Our skill kids, 630 mile, that's to max it out. That's to become a minor. That's to become a big elk. And I put this up here so you guys can you guys can build your own standards. These standards have all went up over the years, <coughs> especially the three hundred shuttle. Our O line had to run a three hundred shuttle in under fifty seven seconds. Fifty seven seconds or under. Our skill kids, which has changed now, it's forty six, had to run a three hundred shuttle in forty seven or under. They had to do ten to fifty pull ten ten to fifty pull ups, and 20, 20 to 60 push-ups. Max was 50 on pull-ups for, uh, I'm sorry, for O-line. 10 and 50 and then 20 and 60. So you see the standards there. And I just did a deal. The shirts, when you put these kids in that room, you're going to have some really good players that think they're badasses, that think they're, their, ego is out of the, their ego is out of this earth. That means they're not about this team, they're about this person. They're about what they're identifying themselves as, you know, what the world's conditioned to think they are, you know, what they want to, you know, what they want to, you know, the perception of that they want to put onto the world. They think they're this big bad dude that don't have to work as hard because they got some athletic ability. When you walk into that room in two weeks, that dude is still in a white shirt. Now, he thinks he's the school big dog. He thinks he's the Friday night big dog. He thinks he's the Saturday night at the lake big dog. But he can't get out of a white shirt. He won't, he won't do what it takes. Or he can't get out of a, a, a tan shirt or a gray shirt. He can't, get out, he can't get that top shirt. He can't become a minor. He can't become a Wolverine. He can't become a big elk. But, but, but he thinks he's a big dog. He talks a big game. He acts like an arrogant jerk in your locker room. But you know what? We just found out who you really were because we tested you. We tested your mental toughness, and now we're testing you in the push, push, shuttle, mile run, and the bench press. And you're not measuring up. You're not maxing out. You're not reaching the standards, you see. And you'll see kids get on fire that can't you thought could you thought couldn't play for you, and they'll eat it up. They'll take full advantage. They'll they'll become that top shirt. 
but I'm going to, you watch. When that pecking order gets established on who's really who in that locker room, I mean, who's really who, not who's a fake, not who just talks a good game, but who's really who, and this kid is having a problem getting out of that middle shirt. He, he can't get out of that prospect shirt because he won't do the extra work. He won't hang out a little longer. He won't get a little more work on that bench press. He won't hit that mile run in the morning and in the evening and after practice. He, he won't do what it takes to get that 300 shuttle, that one test that's holding him back, whether it's a push-up or a pull-up, whatever it is. But he talks a good game. But you know what? I'll, show, I'll tell you what happened. When we started doing this boot camp and they found out what they really were, not this bullshit self they thought they were, not this little arrogant jerk that they thought they were. When they really, when they got in that room and realized that this kid today had no respect for because he couldn't play for them, they had no respect for because he didn't, they didn't think he brought anything to the table, but he may be some kind of 135 pound kid that nobody sees any hope in your program for but he's sitting over there and he's your first minor. He's your first Wolverine. He's your first bulldog. And you got these kids that think they're tough asses over there and they can't get out of that prospect shirt and he ain't doing much to get out of it. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to see kids change mentally. You're going to see kids do things that you never thought they would do work harder than you ever thought they were because that, locker room, that pride, that being that kid that can't get out of that middle shirt, can't, that, that has a hard time, has to struggle to become a minor, has to struggle to become a bulldog, has to struggle to become a Wolverine, has to struggle to be that top shirt. You'll see them kids go to work and become all they can be to max out their life, live that mo life, be that eight. You'll see them do that. Because they'll get in there and they'll get their card pulled. You see, nothing's happening here out of character. Nothing's happening that we're doing anything bad to this kid. We're just testing him. We're just putting a shirt on him to mark where he's at in his testing process. Is he a, is he a liability to the football team physically and mentally? That means he's a prospect. Is he committed? A commit. That means he's done enough work to show us that he will work. He wants to move to the next level. And when you see him have that big elk on, that bulldog, which is a nice, nice shirt, the top shirt, your school color, your brightest color, when you see those dudes, you know those are your dudes. I'm going to get past this because I'm going a little longer than I thought. The lines and the mantra. When you come into your locker room and your kids are lined up on the line, Paint white lines on the floor like we talked about earlier. They'll be dressed and ready to go. That's when you zero and you get them at the position of attention. EJ Boss, Greg Nation, what's up? Chris Force, Amy Buford, what's going on? When you line your kids up and you get them online, this is where the mental programming begins. If you, if you guys haven't uh, studied a bunch of child psychology, there's an old Eastern saying that says, give me a I child from Google until he's seven. Hospital. Give me a child till he's seven and I'll show you the man. That's because they're in an alpha brain state and everything like kids are playing. Bear Bryant, my son's in there right now playing a game in his mind and he's actually in that game in his mind. You know, we yell at these kids and get on them, but they're actually from one to seven or eight. They're in, they're in alpha state. They're in a programmable. They're just, all they're saying is, Hey, whatever I see, I'm going to do whatever, whatever I believe, whatever you teach me to believe, I'm going to believe. And we program kids from one to seven in a mantra. We can program kids the same way. We can reprogram their subconscious in a couple ways. The one way I'm going to teach you is by repetition, by repetition of thought. When you learn, if you want your kids to change, if you want your team to change, if you're serious, not just some guy that, oh, well, we do this and we do that, blah, blah, blah. If you're serious. Line your kids up on the line. Zero. Repeat. Position of attention, man. Teach them how to focus. Teach them how to pay attention. Then start your mantra. A mantra. This is where you program their minds. What do you want your football team 
to be. What do you want your kids to believe? How tough do you want your kids? How resilient do you want your kids? Whatever you want, you can get. All you have to do is program it. Whatever you want, you can get. All you have to do is program it. And that's why when we do this boot camp, just like the United States Marine Corps that train the Navy SEALs, you build a mantra in their mind, a belief system, and they believe it. And they will go down believing it. They won't turn on, they will not turn away when they believe. So when we start our mantra, we line them up. They're on them lines. Zero. Now they're focused. They know something that whatever, whatever coach says, I'm paying attention to and I'm focused on. Here's the mantra we used at Hearts on, and it wasn't the whole thing, and I build to it all the time. If there was some deficiency in my team, if there was some deficiency in my locker room, if there was some problem with our character, if there was some problem with our love, if there was some problem with our relationship, because screw X's and O's, man. If you're not mentally tough, you ain't running no offense. If you ain't mentally tough, you ain't running no defense. Not really running it. And at the end of the day, when you're good and you're a good coach and the other guy's good and he's a good coach and you got good kids, you ain't going to out-guru anybody. It's going to boil down to who's more mentally tough. Here's our mantra. We'd say zero. They'd line up on the line, ready position. And that just means ready position. They're straight up and down position with tension at the rest position with their hands behind their back. I'm a hard torn minor. And the team would say, I don't lie, steal, or cheat. I don't tolerate those that do. I would say, boy or man, man, weak or strong, strong, timid or tough, tough. Nobody in the whole team says works harder than we do. It's hard to beat a team. How do you win? Together. What do you know? We win. 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 Get that about 70,000 times from the time you're in seventh grade to you're a senior, and don't tell me that it don't sink in. I've seen it sink in. Boy or man, I'm a man. Well, kid gets in trouble in class. Hey, son, what happened in there? Well, I did this and this. Boy or man, man, were you acting like a man? No, sir. Kid gets in trouble. Hey, what happened? Well, I, I did this or this. Boy or man? Man. Do men back talk teachers? No, sir. Boy or man? Man. Act like a man. If you want to be a man, act like a man. That's all we're telling them. Excuse me. That's all we're teaching them. That we're teaching them. We're not telling them to be a man. We're teaching them to be a man. We're showing them, hey, Boy or man, I okay. A kid's never gonna say boy. I could I got a five-year-old and eleven year old in there. If they come in here right now, boy or man, man, everybody wants to be a man. They don't want to be a little boy. They're never gonna hear somebody say, Oh, I'll be a boy. No, boy or man, man. So what'd you do? A B C. Well, boy or man. A man. Did you act like a man? No, sir. Now he 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 just took ownership of it. Did you act like a man? No, sir. But I said I'm a man. I just acknowledged I didn't act like one. Do you see the teachable moment? Do you see the lesson? Boy or man, this mantra will train your kids every day. Timid or tough? I'm tough. 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 And then do tough shit with them, and they'll get tough. I promise you. We are selling ourselves way short on kids today, my friends. This mantra, I don't think I need to say anymore. The process, we want to bring these kids in there after we've got them online. Zero. They're paying attention. They're focused. Go through their mantra. Program their mind. Program their mind. Program their mind. Now, listen, this is the boot camp. 
This never ends. This will never end in my programs. Never. This first part stays every day of the year. It don't just end in boot camp. The, the boot camp, boot camp stuff is periodic. <clears throat> the mantra, it stays. The lines, they stay. The zero focus control word, it stays. All that stuff stays. Now, the craziness, it doesn't stay. But the way we do the boot camp, and you can see it right here, is the daily seven. I don't stretch them. That's dynamic. It's the same. It's more beneficial. It opens up the posterior chain, upper body, lower body. I mean, this this warm up is is legit. They're gonna be they're gonna be they're gonna be frothed up. And again, I want to say this before I move on. I have cards for body weight workouts for junior high kids, body weight workouts for high school kids. I have so many versions of this because you're gonna have to change it with your kids year to year. You know, sometimes we have big old kids and I want to get them thinner, so I'll work them out different. Okay, but Whatever your aim is, it's just pretty simple. Like we do in this business of coaching, we figure it out. But I can help you. A lot of guys help me, and I'll help you. We do the daily seven to start off every day. Once they've done their mantra, I'll break them down. Ready, ready, attack. One, two, three, pride. And then they'll, they'll go into wherever your weight room, whatever you all do your stuff, and they'll start their daily seven. Here's where it gets interesting. During your boot camp, this is where your leadership begins, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the one thing that this does, this Daily 7, it gets them in sync. It gets them in tune. And you will be amazed, my friends, when your kids go through these exercises and they're on point. It's like watching synchronized swimming after about two weeks. These kids do every movement together. They say every cadence together. They build real synergy, real energy the energy of the group, not the individual. That's why I do this. It's team energy. It's synergy. They're doing seven exercises, three camp, and they, they, they develop leadership because what's going to happen, you're going to have seven lines, designated lines, when you start your daily seven. The leader of the lines, the leader for that week. He takes role. He's responsible for their attendance, and we'll go over that stuff in a minute. But basically, it gets them together. And I'll, I'll just breeze through the process. I'm getting so far ahead of myself. So we do the daily seven, build some team energy. We do an agility circuit during boot camp every day, every day. Like before they walk into that weight room to lift, you'll see number three, they're going to be – they're going. I do agility every day, and I do it in about a 10-minute period, boxes, dots, ladders, bags. I want them woke up. I want them sweating. I don't want them, hey, still thinking about, oh, I'm tired today, bull, bull, boo. No, I want them wrung out. <clears throat> like I said, if you want a halfway house with a halfway girlfriend, with a halfway car, with a halfway team, with halfway friends, with halfway money, with halfway furniture, <clears throat> with a halfway life, you ain't finding it here. I want them dudes wrung out. I want them wrung out. I want it, I want it for real. So we do our agility, boxes, dots, ladders, bags, do them all together, team stuff. Just run a little circuit, get them rolling. And I had the facility to do it when we did this. It was, was a very, a very, very big-time blessing. Then we lift them, whatever your lift is. We change our lifts during this. I'm a big Cal Dietz guy. Uh, uh, you know, Cal's always pushing the envelope. He's always reaching new science, but that's who I – that's who I follow, whoever you follow, big, bigger, faster, stronger, whatever you follow, they all work. But just remember, you can't go into this boot camp with any idle time. I, I'm, I'm serious. You do everything by the numbers. Once you tell a kid to get somewhere, hey, once and, – and I forgot to do this. When I say everything by the numbers, say I'm going to move my kids, I walk in the locker room, zero, I br uh, they're focused, they're paying attention, I do my mantra. Ready, ready, attack. As soon as I say attack, <clears throat> or as soon as they say attack, I say one, two, three, they say pride. When they move, anytime you move your kids, break them down movement. Nobody just, there's none of this. Guys, this is hard for you all to understand. It's never been a, around military stuff. But you're locking these kids up at the position of attention. You're breaking them down and you're moving them. And every time you move them, boom, ready, ready, 
Attack. One, two, three. Pride. Whenever they go, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And if they ain't there, every one of them, 10 up downs. They'll get there eventually. That's why I said clear your space in the beginning. You better have good movement because you're going to have dudes hauling tail everywhere. But you want them that way because when you tell a kid, get over here, I want him to fly into my face and almost knock me over. I don't want some kid looking at the ground, walking over there with crappy <clears throat> body language and all that. Whenever you move a bunch of kids, move them. Get them used to getting there. If I, if I ask you to come see me, get over here, your ass better be knocking me over. That's now again, like I said in the beginning of this, hey, some dudes are a little laid back or a little more laid back than others, man. But uh I only got I've only had one issue in the game of football is people asked me to coach a game, a tough game, and then they didn't they didn't count on they didn't count on really how tough I was gonna coach it, because it's a tough game. And if you don't coach it tough, if you don't prepare them tough, you're cheating them. You're cheating them. And there ain't no, and there ain't no other way around it. If you ain't coach them tough, if you ain't tough on them, if you if you don't if you don't demand mental and physical toughness by teaching them some way, either through a boot camp or your process, you're cheating them. Fact, they ain't backing off that either. The only problem with the game of football, it's a tough game, and, and then people don't want us to do it in a tough way, Teach, coach it in a tough way, and there ain't no other way to do it. After we lift them, <clears throat> lifts are all by the numbers. <clears throat> Break them down <clears throat> so they'll never break again. We're going to go after our lift to a finisher, and we are going to break them down. Let me say this. We're going to break them down, and, 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 and I will get into this in a second, so they'll never break again. I'm going to break them now. So I know they won't break in a game. I want to break them now, so I know fourth and goal. I like my chances to stop them or get in. Don't make a shit. I'm gonna break them so they won't break. Period. In the story. Daily seven jump jacks, mount climbers, windmills, squat thrusts, push ups, crunches, flutter kicks. Jump jacks, jump jacks. Here it is. Can't you cut the repetition? The start on me, you'll step on me. Ready? Begin. how it looks that's what it, and we'll go all the way through it but like i said if you guys need any more resources on that stuff and, and and you know when we get back if i got time i'll come help you i i, I feel that passionate about helping helping every kid i can help no matter who they play for because we're all in this together but make no bones about it if i can do it for you i'm gonna do it for you if i can help you i'm gonna help you and uh when we get those kids in that daily seven and they go through all those three count exercises to 10. It builds synergy and team energy, man. And they're clapping together. They're counting together. Every movement's together. That's football, baby. That's football. So we pick seven leaders a week, like I said, each line leader. Each leader oversees his line. So here's the best thing in football. We tell kids to focus and pay attention, but we don't teach them. We don't teach them. And anybody that says they do, they do I, well, maybe some do, but I bet it's less than a percent. But we actually tell kids this all the time. This is, this is the, the, the saddest thing we do in football. We tell kids to be leaders. When leadership is the most endangered species on the planet, dedicated leaders, they're not there. They're, it's the most endangered species on the planet. But we keep telling them, 
yeah, lead, be a leader. Why won't you be a leader? Why won't you be a leader? Why won't you be, why won't you do this? Why won't you do that? You should lead, you should lead. What in the hell are we doing to these kids? How does he know how to lead? It's the toughest job in the world. It's also the most unpopular job in the world. If you're a 17 year old kid and you gotta be a real leader, you gotta check your buddy. You gotta have meetings with the head coach about the way he's acting on the weekends. If you're a real leader, you ain't gonna let that crap slide. That's tough, man. That's tough going out on a limb and selling out your buddies for the good of the team. That's tough being in that position at 16 years old to have to make those type of decisions. That's tough, man. That's leadership. That's real shit. That's leadership. It's real. 17-year-old kids, 16-year-old kids, 18-year-old kids having to make adult decisions. That's leadership. But here we are. We just tell them, oh, be a leader. Be a leader. Be a leader. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm frustrated hearing that, man. If I hear it again, whoo, I ain't going to say it. You know how stupid and ridiculous it is that we say that to kids, but we don't teach them how to be leaders. We don't put the time in, but, but we'll, we'll draw up all these damn plays. We'll, we'll X's and O and all this stuff. We won't make leaders. Because that's the important thing, the RPO, leadership, man. Leadership and character and toughness. Those are the things that matter. That's how you build a football program. You don't build it. You don't build it by a cool defense or some cool offense or some cool special team. <laughs> you build it by leadership, character, mental toughness, fundamentals. Mastery of plays, not a bunch of hodgepodge crap. So here's how we do it, the same way the Marine Corps does it. We get our seven lines, and we start our daily seven exercises. That's how we take role. Each leader oversees his line. He has to know where his guys are every day. He takes attendance, and he tells me. Did he have a behavior issue today in class? Because on your clipboard, you're going to have that kid's name. You're going to have his mental toughness number for that week or that testing period. Then you're going to have his attendance, okay, his behavior and his attitude, okay? His attendance is simply this. Was he at school on time? Was he at athletics on time? Was he at all his classes online on time? That kid is responsible to know those things. That kid is responsible to know those things. So your leaders are on a separate sheet. If that kid didn't know all his stuff on his kid, he gets an X for that day. He loses points. Okay? Did the kid behave in class? If the kid got in trouble that day, that, that leader has to know that. He has to check in with that kid. Hey, did you get through all your classes? No trouble. Goes Awesome. But that's leadership. Being in charge of something. Being in charge of something and then paying attention to it, and then measuring it. You cannot manage what you don't measure. Let me say that again for you guys. You cannot manage what you don't measure. So that kid now, he's 17 years old. He's a line leader. His exercise that week is jumping jacks, and he's in charge of seven kids. He's in charge of their attendance. He's in charge of their behavior, and he's in charge of their attitude. We just, we're giving him tools to go out into the world and become a successful CEO, okay? It's pretty simple. If you want them to lead, stop saying lead. Teach them to lead by developing a process to lead. And then he's in charge of their attitude. And attitude to me boils down to this, effort. Is this kid dogging? Everybody knows it, man. Here, now Dennis Franchoni told me this one time. He said, you'll never fool a kid. If you think your kids don't know every turd in your locker room, every troublemaker, every shit talker, every cancer, you're out of your stinking living minds. You're out of your minds. Every kid in your locker room knows who the turds are, who the dead weight is, who's dragging them down. 
so does your leader. How's his effort today? How's his esprit de corps? All esprit de corps means is how's his spirit? Is he, is he in a good mood all the time, or is, he, or, is he, or is he complaining about something all the time? How's his spirit? How's his esprit de corps? The next one's his company. Is he hanging out with guys that are troublemakers outside this football program? And the next is his words. Man, I'm tired of coaching this stuff, man. He's, he's giving the ball to Steve way too much, man. Steve's his boy. Steve's his boy. Man, coaches don't really give a shit about us. They just want to win. Man, I ain't doing that, man. Today, we ought to just go in there and freaking just get through it, man, not try to push past these walls he keeps talking about. His words. That, that, that leader. And we'll have a leadership meeting with them every day they're on that, that they're a line leader, that they're running the daily seven. We're going to have a, we're going to meet with them and we're going to teach them this stuff. What was his words like today, man? Were they positive or was he bitching? And then he'll tell you, they'll figure it out guys. What was it? You know, now this guy's in charge of these kids and he's actually paying attention to their words. He's focusing. He's paying attention to their words because he knows the words can drag this team down. He knows their spree to core. If they come to practice every day worrying about the girl that just dumped them or all their troubles or, or talking about partying this weekend, we know that this kid, this young man, this 16, 17, 18, 19-year-old kid can be in charge of people, and he's focused on their effort, their spree to core, their company, and their words. That's a lot of responsibility you just gave a 17-year-old kid. Now you're teaching him to lead. So each kid takes their week in the line. And when it's over, when your boot camp is over now, you know, you know who your leaders are. Your real leaders. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you ask a kid to get up there in front of uh, – 55, 60, 70, 80 kids and do, and, and do a, a jumping jacks. Jumping jacks, jumping jacks. I count the kings, you count the repetition. You will start on me, you will stop on me. Ready? Begin. When you ask him to do that with some authority, the way he's got to talk in a football game, when you ask him to do that, you, 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 you watch your big, tough dudes. They won't even be able to do it. Uh, 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 uh. They can't. Because, well, you know, the fear of public speaking. It's not that he's a coward or he's scared or he's or inferior in any way. No, absolutely not. It's just a big fear for humans to speak in public. And you'll find out that to be a great leader, you better open your damn mouth. You better be verbal. You better be assertive. Z, non-leadership holds more people back than anything in the world because they want something real bad. They're just not willing to open their mouth and, and command and demand to get it. And you'll find out that your real leaders that you thought were your leaders, they're not. They're not verbal. They're afraid of. They're afraid of the room. And you really want to find your leaders, or do you just want the leaders that the town wants, or the or 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 the the, the program people want, or or do you want the leaders that everybody because everybody likes that kid, or or he's the his dad or mom's this or that or or whatever, or do you want your real leaders? That's all up to you. I, I can't do that. I mean, I can't make that for you. But when you're done, you'll know who your leaders are. And every year, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised on who steps up. But give them a job, man. Put them in charge of some people. And in, 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 in seven days, you'll know if that kid can do it or not. And then rotate them. Sometimes I'll rotate them two weeks. Sometimes I'll rotate them, you know, a week, just depending on – the amount of kids I had that I wanted to – and I let everybody do it because I'm going to tell you something. Here's, here's what you know, and I'm just reminding you. Age doesn't make you a leader. Age – let me say that again. Age doesn't make you a leader, okay? Leadership makes you a leader, okay? That's why you can have a, a 35-year-old head coach in, in 50 or 60. That guy wants that type of leadership, okay? He wants that type of responsibility, and he goes and seeks it. But – Age doesn't make you a leader. So, you know, the, and, and things have changed over the years. Jason Milo, you're a stud. I love you. Beth Reed, Laura, what's up? <clears throat> over the years, I found out 
guys do this because what do we do in life? We do what we've been taught. But people will do this. They'll make their seniors the lead. Yay, he's a senior. He gets to be a leader. Bull poo. The leader gets to be the leader. The one that takes charge gets to be the leader. The leader's the leader. Age don't make you a leader. Leadership makes you a leader. Woo. Did I get fired up right there? Leaders, the most endangered species on the world, on the planet. Leaders aren't born. Make them by giving, giving them a job. And I've covered all this stuff. I've covered all this stuff. <clears throat> they all get their shot to lead. And they get and, – and I put on here because I'm going a little long. But we got time today. Don't worry, my friends. We got time. Verbal control. They get scored. Our leaders get scored one to three on verbal control. Command presence. There you go, Dom Fawcett, great speaker from Arizona that I've had a – he actually did an evaluation on me out of speaking. <clears throat> Command presence and duty. Does he keep a log of his men? Does he know what's happening with his line? Does he report all information to the head coach? Will he tell on his buddies for the good of the program? They're all scored on those things. Verbal control, command presence, and his duty. And his duty is to keep a log of his men. His duty is does he know what's happening with his line. His duty is does he report all information to the head coach and tell on his buddies for the good of the program. That is a leader, my friends. Doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. That's not the world we live in. But that's the right thing to do, and that's leadership. You see, a leader will do the right thing just because it's the right thing to do, just because he knows, he knows that if any success is going to occur, he has to do the right thing. And if it don't work out his way, if doing the right thing cost him his job, if doing the right thing cost him his career, that's okay. Doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Now, you tell me crucial that is to teach our young kids in this country today and we can do it through the game of football if we just implement a, pro a process our agility circuit you guys i said this a minute ago whatever your agility circuit is i'm running i'm running over you don't need to know this when you build your agility circuit uh after you do your daily seven agility uh when you do that I just – I take 10, 15 minutes, and man, we, we roll them. We roll them. Boxes, dots, bags, ladders every freaking day, every day, every day, and intense every day, intense every day, and intense every day. Lift. I went over this already. Set your lifts up, man. When you go in there, just for an example, I know, boom, get your stations. Ready, ready, attack. One, two, three, pride. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. How don't don't not be there. Do not not be there. Because everybody in the room does up downs. And you see what you find out is you become one. You see, because that day Steve was in the back of the line. Steve's your stud. And you see, Steve didn't make it to his rack. So everybody in the room had to pay for Steve. Well, see what they say to Steve. See what Steve says to them. To Steve turn around and say, hey, man, hey, I, that was my bad, baby. We got this. Let's move on. Or are they bitching at him, fussing at him? Dang, dude, you do this all the time. You're going to find out if Steve's in charge, whether, they, whether he can lead them or not. Does that make sense, guys? You're going to find out whether he can lead them or not. He may be perfect in his line, but he can't handle that team when he screws up. You really want to find leaders, or you just, or you just, or you just doing what a lot of a lot of people do? They just lip smack it. Or you really want to find your leaders, or do you really want to be out there on a Friday night? And if you go down, you go down with your with your dudes, and you could cry with them because you all did it together. Or you want to go down, or win. I'm not saying you're gonna lose. Win and lose with some dudes that no matter what happens, you can go down with them. Because it's a tough, it's a tough business when you when you have to sit there at the end of a loss or the end of a season 
And you have to know in your heart and your mind and your soul that you didn't do everything that you could do to give them the tools to be mentally tough men that make damn good football players. But more importantly, they make good husbands and good men in life. So I'm going to get to the finisher. This is the end of it. Hang in there with me. It's worth it. We do our finisher. We want to break these guys. And like I said in the beginning, most coaches' definitions of breaking the dude and my definition are completely different. And if you're not willing to take your team, your team, and break every damn dude on it, hard to reach your full potential. I love boot camp because I get to see how my best players are going to act in, in adversity. Because when we go line them up, zero, mantra, daily seven, agility, lift, and when we go to that finisher in about an hour and 30, hour and 40 minutes, I'll promise you we're walking in that room. They know it, and we know it. The only purpose to walk in that room is to break them suckers. Break them. Break them. Break them. Unmercifully break them down. I want to see what my best players are going to do when they can't do no more. So we pick three exercises. Let me just give you this. You can stick with this all the way. Every first exercise is up, downs. I put it on here. Okay. So I'll start them off that first week, five to one or 10 to one, just depending on how good a shape they are in the beginning. So I'm going to go five to one. Up, downs, jump squats, and toe raises. So it's going to look like this. You'll have – one or two dudes in charge. I usually pick one dude to be in charge, and he gets the whole room going. Get them going. Hit one, hit two, hit three, hit four, hit five. Boom. Squat position. Up one, up two, up three, up four, up five. Toe raises. And I'm counting. Every time he says squats, five, four, three, two, one, everybody's got to be down in squat position. When he says toe raises on your backs, Five, four, three, two, one. Them dudes are moving. And he's saying, what's the number? What's the number? Five. Up one, up two, up three, up four, up five. On your feet. What's the number? What's the number? Four. Hit one, hit two, hit three, hit four. Four up downs. Four jump squats. Four toe raises. We got Five is a small number for this. We usually start at 10 and go to 20. When it gets to 20, they can't do it. They can't do 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15, 15, up, downs, jump squats. So what's going to happen? Now, every time a kid moves the wrong movement, he jumps to the ground, he miscounts, we tack one on. So at the end of it, we may have 20 up, downs, 20 jump squats, 20 toe raises. And what starts to happen, the kids start flipping out, okay? Because, that you know, they, they just barely get through it. They're screwing it up. Then they, then they get – they get to the end and they got 20 more of every exercise. Well, what do you think's happening in that locker room? They're getting pissed. They're punching the ground. I do it on the wrestle mats, but they punch the mats and oh, this is stupid, man. See what your see what your good players are gonna do. Because the best players you got, if they really love football, you'll see guys that get angry, but they just go harder. They push through them walls. And then you get to, you know, week three or four, and you get 15 to one on all exercises, and now all those freshmen and sophomores and all those young kids and, and then all those kids got to be on the same page moving uh, up downs up downs up downs hit one hit two hit three everybody's up and down at the same time jump squats up one up two up three and man and now if, if one kid goes to the wrong exercise you tack them you start tacking them on at the end and then you'll start seeing them kids come together but what again 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 what are we teaching them we're teaching them to pay attention and focus when, you're, when your damn guts are hanging out, when you ain't got nothing left. 
when your mind's all over the place and you can't even focus on holding your damn head up and you got to know what number we're on? You got to know where to go next. It's just like in the fourth quarter when you call the play and the kid jumps off sides or he runs the wrong play. Was he conditioned to do that under pressure? Was he conditioned to do that under fire? That's all we're doing. And you know what? Everybody builds a football team different. But I'll take this way a thousand times, a million times, because I know, I know there's not going to be any mistakes. And if there is, I can live with it because we're all fallible. But I know them guys did their best, and they didn't do it on purpose. We have to break these kids. And when I say break them, man, there's going to be days you go in there and you, you know, man, it's 20 to 1. We're in the last week of boot camp. We've worked up to 20 to 1. And uh, I can tell you, I can tell you this, man. My friends that I appreciate and value, man. I've walked in that daggum office. I walked in that office before just almost on the edge of, you know, we ain't going to ever let a kid get hurt or anything like that or push him to the point where we're going to hurt him. You know, we'll stop him or, you know, have him set out. I mean, obviously everybody has that. But, and I've, I've walked in there at times thoroughly just – so proud of my kids for getting through it and watching them grow up, watching them become real men, not fake men, man, not, not just some kid that said, I want to play football. You know, you graduate through this boot camp, get them through them finishers, that 20 to 1 that last week. From, you can start at 5 to 1, 10 to 1, 15 to 1, 20 to 1, or you know what I mean, or how, stretch it out or however you got to do it. You're going to find out it's so tough. It's so tough. So – and, again, that, that one I just gave you was a lower body one, okay? We did up-downs, jump squats, toe raises. On an upper body day, you'll do, you'll do uh, up-downs because everyone starts up-down. Superman push-ups, and I always get them up there. And up, boom, up. You know, do them like that because they cannot do push-ups at this point. And then do any core crunches, whatever exercise you want to do for your core. So I always do a up, down, an upper, or a lower lift, like jump squats or push-ups, and then do a core lift. That's their finisher. And just, hey, man, you may have some super freaks. You may be going to 25 to 31. I don't know. But I've tested some pretty tough kids doing this, and you'll never make them any tougher. And that's the Marine Corps standard, man. That's, that's, that's how it was. That's how, of course, you may be going, you know, you may be doing that stuff for three or four hours all day long. That ain't no lie. So, anyway, those are the examples. I just talked about that. I just talked about that. I put that all in this PowerPoint. Uh, it's brutal. It's a beat down. You know, they won't be able to finish. You know, we're looking for teachable moments. I've talked about this, this whole lesson. This went on for an hour and a half. I've talked about this. Uh, you know, we want them to lose their cool. Teach them the lessons. There's so many teachable moments in doing this boot camp. And, and, and if this thing's recorded, it's actually on my Facebook. I'll put it on, uh, I'll put it on YouTube if you guys want. Just let me know. Let me know if you need anything. Uh, but I put all this stuff in here. I went a little bit long, but I wanted to do the whole thing. Uh, I want to say this on that before I go to the last slide. We want them to lose their temper. Why? It's a teachable moment. What happened? Coach, I just got mad. I couldn't do no more. Oh, man. What happens in a game when you're that exhausted? I got to get a hold of my mind, Coach. Okay. Well, the next day when it starts happening, I'll just point at him. I just point straight at him. What are you going to do today? 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 And he'll just get so focused or whatever he gets, whatever he has to get, whatever he has to get to hang in there. He gets it and he grows up. He pushes through that wall so he won't break. His breaking point just went up. He went from a one to a two. We got to get them all to threes. We got to get them all in that last shirt. They're going to lose the bearing. They're going to throw fits. And they're going, some of them are going to quit, man. I ain't there to make them quit. And, and rarely, rarely, they very rarely quit. But every now and then, you got one that's going to quit. I don't really want to say this politically correct, but I'm going to say stuff. I'm going to say this, man. It's hard to have a kid on a football team that'll quit. 
and uh, parents that let, let kids quit raise quitters. I don't care what they let them quit. You let, you let a kid quit, you're raising a quitter. Because you quit once, it's tough. I always tell kids this, you know, it's tough because you know it's wrong. Kid quits a second time, he don't think about it as much. Still bothers him. But he, he does it anyway. He got over the hard one that first time he quit. And then from then on out, he'll quit everything he does. I rarely have kids quit. We don't let them quit. But every now and then, we quit. What, what was going to happen if, if he was your left guard on the goal line and you're running cross buck? No. So, there you go. Results, esprit de corps. You develop a, a spirit in your football team. Let me say that again. Esprit de corps is developed. Result of the boot camp. A spirit in your football team. A spirit in your football program. Your culture will be one that's based on team and toughness. Your culture will be one that's based on team and toughness. Test results and metamorphosis of human potential will amaze you. Your kids will be self-starters more and more. You will find, you will find and build leaders that truly lead. Your team will be relentless. You will reach your full potential. Last slide. Graduate them. Get dog tags made. You can find it anywhere online. They're like 80 cents. A set of dog tags made for your kid with your program, motto, boot camp, the year, and graduate them and have a ceremony. And I'll put this on the slide. Anybody that needs it can have this PowerPoint. Give them dog tags for all that complete your standards. Top seven leaders of boot camp. Give them an award. Most improved, line skill, give them reward. Best bench, best push-up improvement, best 300 improvement, best mile. Athletically, give everything skill award and give everything alignment award. Your best athletic, athletic leader overall, that's your guy that earned a blue shirt that was your best leader, your top dude. Graduate them. Give them dog tags. You'll be surprised. Them kids will wear them dog tags everywhere. They'll hang them in their locker, man. They'll be proud of them. They graduated something. They became something. And uh, what I'll say at the end of this, in closing, is that I don't know. I, do, I, do, I would never want to play this game halfway with halfway mentality, with halfway kids and we have this time with these kids. And to me, weight room gains, X's and O gains are not as important as mental toughness gains or character gains or leadership gains. Because I know if I get them mentally tough, if I build leaders with great character, all that stuff will come faster and it'll be better. But if, if you're not tough on them, if you don't have a system to measure, remember, you can't manage what you don't measure. Are you measuring their, their strength, their speed, their mental toughness, their leadership? Are you measuring those things? Because this system will teach you how to measure those things. If you're not measuring those things, how are you, how are you checking their progress? How do you know who's your guy? How do you know who's for real? It's extreme. I know it's extreme. This game's extreme. And uh, I just want to say thank you guys for letting me present this. Coach, uh, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say too much, man. That, that, was, uh, that was awesome. It was powerful. Um, it was compelling. I, I did record it. So if anybody wants to go back and watch it later, man, I highly recommend it um, and pass it along to another coach and another coach and another coach because it's a message that everybody needs to hear. So um, I'm not going to say too much about it just because, you know, I mean, Coach said it all, man. I, I tweeted a couple of things as he was going, but you know, I just want to thank him uh, for putting this on. When we had talked about it, man, it was he was getting me fired up by telling me about what he was going to talk about, and I thought it was perfect, and it absolutely was. So, I know every coach in here has gotten a tremendous amount from it. So, Coach, I I thank you so much, man, for putting this on. Hey, thanks for the opportunity, dude. I can't wait till we get to roll again. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, no, we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll do something else, too. We'll get you yeah. back on here to do another talk.
Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, uh, all this stuff going on, man. I appreciate what you're doing. It means a lot to a lot of people. No, nah, well, it's been uh, it's been tremendous. I can't thank the coaching community enough for being so supportive. So, thanks to all the coaches out there, man, um, for tuning in and checking uh, checking out Coach Coach today, man. And, and obviously, a big big thank you and big shout out to Coach Williams for that tremendous presentation. Um, we'll be back on in about a half hour. All right, and uh, we'll just we'll we'll have a great Wednesday, man. So <clears throat> appreciate everybody tuning in.